The following program is brought to you by Pizzop Productions. Boy, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, welcome to an all new episode of the Totally Necessary Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Porter. Holy shit, was that a fucking show? That is how you kick off WrestleMania weekend, ladies and germs. Holy snap, that was awesome, man. From front to end. WWE NXT, I applaud you, ladies. Especially the ladies. How's it going? <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. This was a pretty fucking fun show, man. Like, I was, uh, I was able, I watched it on, um, I watched it in my living room. Normally, I watch, I watch these shows in my office, um, Kind of, it's a pretty big TV ish. I mean, it's like a forty some odd inch TV, uh, but we got the big TV, uh, the seventy five incher in the living room, and uh, quite the great choice. To, I don't know why I haven't been sitting in my living room to watch these shows. I don't know. It's like the office out here, dude. I'm like separated from the house into my garage, so I'm able just to like, you know, kind of be separated away from the family and whatnot. I'm able to just kind of come out, chill, you know, hang out, smoke a little weed, you know. Um, but yeah, just sitting in there. And watching it on the big screen in my comfy ass leather chair, it's like, dude, that's that's what's up. That's the way to do it. I don't know, but I still like chilling in my office. I mean, that's obviously where we are right now. Um, dude, dude, getting into some professional wrestling, dude. How's your WrestleMania uh, weekend going so far, dude? I don't know how New Japan and Ring of Honor and WrestleMania on Sunday are gonna top what we saw tonight for the uh, the top three. I wish I would have seen. The Impact show that was last night, I was fucking around on the Fight TV app, and I saw that it was on last night, and uh, I think it was being headlined by the Lucha Bros versus Rob Van Dam and Sabu. I don't know how great of a match that would have been, but I, I kind of, it, you know, I kind of like want to get into Impact Wrestling. Uh, MLW was running shows yesterday. You got Joey Janela's uh, Spring Break. Uh, fucking, oh shit, dude. Uh, the dude from, uh, he's, he's former UFC champion. Uh, he did New Japan commentary with uh, Josh Barnett. Duh. Josh fucking Barnett. He did Bloodsport this weekend or yesterday, I guess. That's when it was. Um, dude, it's been a way, well, you know, a pretty, a pretty, I don't know. I, I, I've been listening to uh, people hyping up WrestleMania, giving their thoughts and previews and, you know, their, their thoughts and whatnot on regards to, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know about you guys out there, but I've been like pretty fucking pumped for uh, this weekend for a long time. I don't know. Dude. It's just it's like it's be- like I like football. I do enjoy watching football, but at the same time, like this to me is way more exciting, way more exciting. I don't know if any of you out there go and watch, uh, you know, old wrestling to maybe like help hype yourself up, hype yourself up a little bit. I don't know, dude. I've been kind of going through this kick of like buying vintage VHS tapes. So I went and purchased like the the actual uh, like original, not like specifically the one I rented as a kid, but like the original copies of like WrestleMania Nine when it was released by Coliseum Home Video, uh, King of the Ring, nineteen ninety three. Like the the two videos mm-hmm. I used to watch, you know, a lot. And I got Bash at the Beach, nineteen ninety six, when Hulk Hogan, you know, famously. Uh, you know, turn turned on WCW and shit, and you know the formation of the NWO. Those are like three uh, main shows from when I was like first got into wrestling, dude. I, I remember specifically renting the the WrestleMania and uh, King of the Ring from Sunburst Video. This is uh, this is like old video store back like in the '90s here in Yakima. It was like in the ghetto, in the heart of the ghetto of Yakima, dude. And, like you went there. And, like, the porn was in the back behind this little case area where, you know, you got to be 18 to go into. Uh, and then the, the wrestling videos were right next to the Spanish uh, tapes as well, the Mexican, uh, like, dramas and stuff. 
which my uh, mom's uh, my mom's boyfriend was Mexican, so he'd always rent those. <laughs> uh, it's crazy, dude. Yeah, we'd always rent like you know, like Friday. Th- no, actually, we didn't get in, we weren't into Friday Thirty. It was all about a Nightmare on Elm Street, dude. It was all about Nightmare on Elm Street and Child's Play. And so I've yeah, I went and I got all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies as well, dude. It's like holy shit, Kevin. Like you have them on Blu-ray and DVD, and now you have to, like, but it's like I don't know. Like, it has to be the original copy from when it was originally released. Like I said, vintage, okay? So we're being specific. It's not like I'm just getting some shitty, you know, re-release that happened in, you know, 1999 or whatever when, like, you know, they had, you know, the, like, they had a, they had a bo- couple box sets that came out. I want a DVD one and a blue, and a VHS one. Um, so, I don't know, dude. VHS, HS, <laughs> VHS tapes are so fucking cheap right now, dude. Like, you could assume a pretty decent collection for, you know, like fucking 30 bucks, basically, dude. You get 30 fucking, you know, I'm so used to saying DVDs and Blu-rays, dude. I mean, like, obviously, you know, you, you have 4K, Blu-ray, DVD, and then VHS. And then maybe, you know, was it Betamax? Which I was too, I never fucked around on a Betamax or anything like that. So, you know, I was always, I was always up to par with a VHS tape. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know, dude. It's, it's, it's kind of cool, even though, like... I don't know. So you just pick it. You, you you be very selective in like what you got. So like I got like you know all the Nightmare on Elm series. I got like Escape from New York, and again like you can get them really cheap, dude. Like eBay is pretty good, and then good like your thrift uh, shops, dude. Like you go to your thrift shops, dude. Like I went and found I found because uh, so, like I'm getting wrestling tapes, right? So like I went to this um, Union Gospel uh, Missions. Uh, thrift shop today and because they have a whole huge selection of vhs tapes and i was just like you know digging around through there and i found a copy of wcw road wild 1999 the return of hulkamania you know so it kind of bookends it's kind of uh, it's kind of poetic when you think about it like it bookends my whole like vhs collection because like i'm I'm, I'm having to kind of put a stop to it because like i kind of feel like sometimes i have an addictive personality so it's like oh i'm like oh yo now i gotta get this movie and this movie is like all right stop 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 most of these movies you're buying you already owed a copy of like let's just get a core collection you know just a nice little collection that's all you need and you need to stop like ah i know i got scarface dude it's a double fucking vhs fucking Oh man, I love Scarface. It's just such a good fucking movie. But again, like I found that fucking random Road Wild ninety ninety nine fucking VHS tape, and it's like that's again it bookends the whole process because it started with you know t- the first one I bought here a couple weeks ago was WCW Bash at the Beach ninety six. So it, it totally curtails, you know, totally syncs it up. Whatever, whatever, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty fucking excited. I don't know. I'm trying to stretch these out because usually these reviews are like really fucking short. I hate up like oh there's five matches I'm reviewing like I didn't take notes I'm just kind of going off you know the emotion of the evening and it was a good fucking evening for professional wrestling guys so dude okay okay we'll get into NXT takeover New York WrestleMania weekend the kickoff uh, War Raiders defending their NXT Tag Team Championship against Aleister Black and Ricochet now I know on the preview earlier this week I was kind of I was kind of thinking that maybe they were going to go and give Aleister Black and Ricochet uh, the NXT champion, Tag Team Championship, uh, possibly the Raw and possibly the SmackDown, which the SmackDown one is still in play. Um, I thought really that they may give them all three titles, but it was kind of like, ah, well, there's no real point because they're, le- you know, they're supposed to be leaving. Uh, they're supposed to be on the way out of NXT. So it's like, really, why would a derail momentum of you know the War Raiders in regards, I mean, it was their first tag team title defense, a major one at least. Dude, this match went 31 and 10 minutes. I didn't even realize it went 31, 31 minutes and 10 seconds. What did I say originally? I don't know. I'm really high right now. <laughs> 31 minutes and 10 seconds. It was like 31 hours. It was 31 hours and 10 seconds, guys. Um, this match was a great match to start off the show. I was kind of you know, some of it, come of it, you know, you're kind of getting like used to seeing Ricochet and Aleister Black every single week. So it's kind of like, uh, you kind of see this stuff every single week. So it's like, okay. But then they, um, as soon as War Raiders kind of went in and did that like a little bit of a backflip off their back, they like, you know, springboarded off or whatever, um, you know, parroting what Ricochet and Aleister Black had already done to them. Like, dude, that was pretty fucking cool. My kid, uh, Jameson, dude, he was like, what? But they're so big. They're so I I don't mean to be rude, but they're fat. They're big. They're big guys. I was like, some some fat guys, some big guys are uh, you know, they're they're agile, man. They're able to get up there. They're able to fucking 
you know, bust off a fucking move like that. And which we, I mean, going, going, not going too far, but you know, we saw Walter tonight, you know, take to the the top rope for the very first time. Apparently, um, this dude it was such a great match to start it off, dude. It was hard hitting. It was fast paced. Um, again, I didn't realize that went thirty one minutes. Honestly, dude, like thirty one minutes. Seriously, that seemed like it was twenty. Like I, you know, it's just. It, I guess it just goes to show that that match was really, really fucking entertaining. Um, War Raiders obviously getting the uh, the pinfall on Ricochet, which I, you know, dude, him hitting that I like, what's it, like a six fucking forty, six fifty or whatever, and hitting that and flat backing that shit. Oh my gosh, dude, holy shit! And then he took the fucking leg drop. And I like that. I like that uh, finishing move that War Raiders has that they finished him with, and you know, Alistair Black almost makes the save. So. You know, War Raiders are continuing on. They're 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 sticking around in NXT. They are the tag team champions. And then Aleister Black and Ricochet both took bows as they will be competing on the main card of WrestleMania um, on Sunday, guys. Uh, we saw for the NXT North American Championship, uh, Velveteen Dream defend against Matt Riddle, bro. Bro, holy shit, man. Like, I was kind of scared. I, I was like, honestly, going out after the first match, I was like, I really hope this match doesn't shit the bed. Did it shit the bed? Fuck no, dude. Fuck no. Every single match just built upon. It was, it, I mean, they had their own pace. They had their, it was, they told their own story. I mean, like, I don't want to say it was like, you know, one after another, it got better and better and better. I want to say they were all pretty much on fucking par for the most part. Uh, this match went 17 minutes and 35 seconds. It really showed what Matt Riddle can do. His Matt wrestling, his chain wrestling is fucking amazing. Showed that he's a fucking player to come in NXT. I'm really, you know, as much as I wanted Matt Riddle to fucking win, and, you know, I, me, me and uh, me and Jameson were pretty pissed off that Matt Riddle lost. He was like, fucking Velveteen Dream, motherfucker. Like, as, as, as much as I wanted Matt Riddle to win, and as, as good of a match as that was, I'm glad Velveteen Dream, you know, just eked out the fucking win. Uh, I hope that means that Velveteen Dream will be staying, with, you know, um, in NXT for the foreseeable future because I think he has a lot that he can, you know, contribute um, on the NXT brand, and they, they just can't lose him yet. I mean, they just lost Ricochet and Aleister Black. Um, you know, him, Gargano, Matt Riddle, Adam Cole, uh, the Re- Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, fucking Roderick Strong, um, <clears throat> Adam, you know, Adam Cole, <laughs> War Raiders, uh, th- this is your, uh, you know, this is your NXT, man, Keith, throw Keith Lee in there too, man, throw Keith Lee in there too, I think he's a fucking player, um, it was, it was just a, it was, it was wonderful, like, I really enjoyed the shit tonight between Matt Riddle and fucking Velveteen Dream, dude. Like, and then they ended up on the, you know, the little bit of fist bump at the end, dude. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, so, dude, what? I mean, obviously, the main event was the match of the night. That ha- that was the match of the night. But damn, dude, if that Walter uh, taking on Pete Dunne for the WWE United Kingdom Kingdom Championship, if that was not a fucking close second, dude. Like, holy shit. It was just a different match altogether compared to anything else on the on the card here. Um, man, oh, just the hard hits from Walter, uh, Pete Dunn, um, you know, showing why he is the bruiser weight. Uh, it built nicely. I mean, like you know, it's like for anybody that's kind of like you know, I don't know. It felt like an old school match, like the way you know British wrestling is. It feels old school. You know, they work a hold. They work a body part. I mean, it's believable in a sense, you know. And uh, you know, Pete Dunne mixes a you know a lot of that old school wrestling, but still enough like you know the backflips and like you know you know the high flying and whatnot. He still makes it a, a definitely a fucking entertaining match, dude. One of my one of my favorite matches of all time that I've seen in person was Brody King versus fucking Pete Dunne. At you know, I think I talked about it this last uh, podcast, dude. But that match was amazing. And Walter, fuck, dude, is your new WWE King United Kingdom champion. Uh, this match went 25 minutes and 40 seconds. Um, just fucking amazing. Hats off to the UK scene, dude. I think that's something we need to start covering more. I don't know. If I can fit it in some weeks, I mean, you know, I, I definitely want to start talking more about about the United uh, Kingdom scene over there, dude. Uh, fuck, dude. Such an amazing match, dude. Walter, again, is your new champ. 
Um, we saw in a fatal four-way match for the NXT Women's Championship. Now, this was the shortest match of the evening, going 15 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, the women, I, you know, I'm not, you know, I wasn't that interested going into this match here. I would say this was like, you know, again, like I explained myself on the on the um, the preview for this that like just this this wasn't the the match I was looking forward to the most on the card. Uh, but they all went out there, dude. They, and, you know, I knew they were going to put on a good match. It's not that I didn't think they were going to put on a good match. Uh, I just thought Walter and Pete Dunn was a far more desirable match in the sense of a, just work rate and everything. Uh, nonetheless, I'm not trying to trash that fucking match, but uh, it is what it is, man. It, again, it went 15 minutes and 45 seconds. Bianca Belair taps out to Shayna Baszler. Um, I didn't think I didn't think they were going to end it right there, but they did. Uh, and again, what I you know wanted to happen happened. I wanted Shane Baszler to fucking retain. I want to see her continue in NXT. I didn't want to see her go to the main roster. So uh, good to see that that is the the direction. Um, fucking stellar performance though from Io Shiri, uh, Bianca Belair, and Kyrie Sane. Uh, fucking way fun. The the interactions between uh, Io Shiri and uh, Carrie Sane, like that was dude. This some awesome shit. The emotion from Carrie Sane having when she was going up to hit that. To hit that fucking elbow, and like they were like, "Oh, the elbow shoot out our face!" Like Mario Ronaldo was all fucking saying that shit, um, and it, it was just so good, man. It was just so fucking good, dude. I just I appreciated the fuck out of it, you know. I just really appreciated the fuck out of that moment. And uh, your main event, guys, uh, Johnny Gargano taking on uh, Adam Cole for the vacant NXT Championship in a two out of three falls match. Uh, this match went thirty eight minutes and twenty five seconds. Again, like, you know, when I pulled up the times right before I started recording, I was like, wow, that match went 38 minutes. Like, again, like, it didn't feel like it took that long. Like, it literally felt like maybe 25 minutes, 30 minutes, right? Like, that match didn't feel like it was almost fucking 40 minutes. Just going back and forth, dude, and just that the very end with, you know, Johnny Gargano fighting off um, all of Undisputed and just the back and forth and all the moves and just the intensity, the the story that was being told there. And it was like, you know, the feel good moment of Johnny Gargano winning the, the NXT championship. And then Champa coming out at the very fucking end, hugging them and do their, you know, their family and shit. And it was just amazing, dude. It's like how, and especially, I don't know uh, how many of you saw that, that piece that was released on the WWE uh, PC um, YouTube page. I subscribed to that fucking YouTube page, dude. And they put out quality fucking work, dude. That, that, you know, the video with Champa, Talking about you know having miscarriage, you know him and his wife having a miscarriage, and you know the ba- the the fight that they had to go through just to you know have the child that they they recently had had, which I didn't even know he fucking they had a kid, and it's definitely not something I heard about. Um, I mean, how do, how do you boo that guy ever, dude? I mean, it's not like to say people really. I mean, people loved him, you know, but I mean, like you you booed him just for the fact of like, you know, he's 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 doing his best to be the bad guy, but I mean, just after that, dude, just fucking Tommaso. Dude, I don't know. I, I know I kind of made mention on the preview that I haven't really been the biggest fan of, like, Gargano. And, like, I'm not necessarily, but I really did enjoy the fucking moment there, dude. That was, like, really fucking, it was, like, fuck, dude. Like, because, like, sometimes you think about, like, you know, because when I was a kid, I wanted to be a professional wrestler. I mean, that's that was the dream, dude. I mean, we all had that dream. Like, Shawn Michaels winning the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 12. I mean, that's the fucking moment for our kids, you know, people my age, you know, people in their 30s. Um you know, in their forties and whatnot. And, uh, well, not forties, but you know, definitely in your thirties, like late twenties, maybe. Um, it's, it, you know, it, it, you think about though, you know, like I, I remember thinking like, Oh man, it's going to be cool to see, you know, the people my age when they're wrestlers and you think of this when you're a kid. And so like to see Johnny Gargano have that and you know, Shawn Michaels is a train, you know, he works at the PC. So he's working with Gargano and Adam Cole in regards to these matches, like, he's the one, you know, producing the matches, basically, and it's just like, you know, is he the new Pat Patterson, like, is, I would, I, I would, I would, if Shawn Michaels, obviously, Shawn Michaels was the, uh, you know, the, uh, the fucking, it's not assistant, but I'm trying to fucking, the producer, yeah, the producer of the fucking match and shit, dude, like, worked with him, and I'm not surprised there, dude, like, that has to be it, I mean, they told that story, he, he, Gargano, when he held that title, was just like Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12. He recreated that moment perfectly. And, dude, it brought fucking goosebumps to my fucking skin. It brought, like, you know, uh, 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 you know, tears to my eye. It was, it was like, yeah, you, you earned it, buddy. You fucking earned it, dude. You know, 
It's pretty cool. It was a cool fucking moment, dude. And like I said, coming on the podcast, like I, it's, I think we are going to see moments that are topping NXT tonight. I, I, I don't know. Just call. Uh, I'm writing the emotion, but I feel like tomorrow night's going to be just as good as tonight. And we in WrestleMania, man. I, I just have a feeling that WrestleMania. I know everybody's like we're all complaining about the length of the show and whatnot, but I think it's going to be a good show. Call me crazy. But like I, there's enough on this show that has me excited. Like, like I, I just, I have a feeling, dude. I just have a feeling that this, it's going to be everything's going to move at a nice pace this weekend, and we're going to see some amazing fucking moments, dude. So that's that's the show tonight, guys. We're fucking going to be back tomorrow. Fucking G1 Supercard, New Japan, Ring of Honor. That show starts at 4 p.m. my uh, local time. So I'm lucky. I I love living on the West Coast, guys. I fucking love it, dude. I always get shit fucking... (laughs) We get shit early over here, dude. It's amazing. It's like, I just get off work. I'm like, oh, fucking boom. I go home and fucking watch wrestling. Hey, I'm recording a podcast. It's 8 o'clock. Like, it's, you know, people getting out there, dude. It's like 11, 12 o'clock over New York, you know, and stuff. And like, man be in new york right now for that shit go to the bar go hang out you know go to wrestling tomorrow morning it's just like i gotta do it dude i gotta go to wrestlemania one of these years man like hopefully you know i should be going to the royal rumble this year i i definitely am planning on going or next year i guess 2020 uh in houston dude so hopefully next year you know we'll be able to fucking be on location i don't know about wrestlemania fuck dude think about that if you travel to royal rumble and wrestlemania how much money are you fucking making like that's those are i mean like I don't know, if you're making decent money, I guess, you know, but shit, doing back-to-back, man, I mean, that's, like, pretty much all your extra money you're just, like, putting away to take those trips, dude, because, I mean, it's, like, what, $5,000, $10,000, depending on, like, how big you go, you know, fuck, dude, that's a lot of fucking money, dude, it's a lot of fucking money, but I guess wrestling fans are crazy, dude, they fucking, wrestling fans make it happen, I guess, I don't know, I know it's gonna take me a whole fucking year to save up for uh, heading out to the Royal Rumble, guys. But, dude, holy shit, guys. I'm excited for tomorrow. I'm excited for tomorrow. And we will be back. Uh, if you haven't already, dude, go back and check out the uh, the podcast that no one listens to, man. Uh, this week, dude, Eric Smesse was on there. Amazing episode. Really enjoyed recording that shit. And, uh, yeah, man, you should enjoy that, too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kevin Porter. Uh, we will see you tomorrow night after the G1 Super. Are you ready? Get up, get up!